check one two we should be going um the last time oh, let's get the map here we are dun, dun, dun. all right, all right. The last time I played this, I uh, kept messing up in this coal mine area. What the? And uh, I've got that procedure down. And so my lagoon save from the end of the last stream is no good. But I'm going to get through this this time. I got it all figured out. And I think I can get through here without messing up. So, hopefully. And we can go ahead and finish this game. So let's start it. And restore. And I gotta restore back to the temp one save. Alright, so. And I'm gonna frotz the amulet. So that I'll have a light source after I get rid of the book. Now, some versions of the game, you can't frotch yourself at the beginning of the game and use yourself as a light source, and some of them you can. So, it depending upon what version of the game it is, you could just frotch me from the very beginning, but I'm not sure about this version. So, now... We're going to go east into the coal bin room. There is a rumbling noise behind you as the ceiling of the tunnel collapses, blocking your retreat. The air smells strongly of coal gas. You won't survive long in this atmosphere. The coal bin room. This is obviously the heart of a large coal mine, illuminated by a wall-mounted lamp. The bottom of a metal coal chute is visible at the north end of the room. Another chute continues downward at the southern end. A large coal bin is overflowing and the floor is completely covered with lumps of coal. A passage leads east, but a western passage is blocked by rubble. Alright, so we're going to open the orange vial. I think it's what color, doesn't matter. Yep, because... Uh, it's the only vial we're carrying. We're gonna, and then we got to drink the orange potion. The orange potion tasted like... Oh, yeah, I was about to pass out from the bad air. The orange potion tastes like pepper and made your nose tingle. And the orange potion obviates the need for breathing, is what it does. A few lumps of coal. Someone slides out of the coal chute and lands near the bin. Although your clothes are much cleaner and less torn, the stranger looks virtually like your own twin. Okay, now we're going to drop the uh, vial. And it's important that we drop the vial. And I'll get to that when we get there. And I need to write this number down. 496. All right, four, nine, six. When you drop the orange vial, it falls between the lumps of coal and is buried. Your disheveled twin is having difficulty breathing, but gas. The combination is four, nine, six. Your older self then looks at you almost expectantly. Give book to older self. 
your older self accepts the spell book gratefully. Your look-alike dives into the lower chute and slides out of view. So now we're going to go east again to the dial room. On the eastern wall is a heavy door with a dial set into it. There is a sign on the door. Another exit leads west and a wall-mounted lamp provides illumination. And the floor is covered with lumps of coal. So we're going to turn the dial to 496. The click from inside the door, open the door, and go east and get the rope. And then we're going to go up. And then we're going to go northwest. Shaft top. And you're deep inside a large coal mine at the top of the air shaft. You could descend into the shaft passages in many directions lead further into the mine. Coal mine. You're in a winding tunnel. Passage leads off in many directions. Lying near the mouth of one passage is a wooden timber, probably left over from the construction of the mine. Get the timber. All right. We're going to go northwest again and west. And we're at the top of the chute. All right. Let's not mess this up. Now here, we got to get set up to go down this chute with this rope. And uh, get to the slanted room. And if we are carrying anything, we can't. you won't get into the slanted room. You have to be empty-handed. And so, tie rope to timber. The rope is tied securely to the center of the beam, so let's drop timber. All right, dropped. A troglodyte trundles in and dumps a load of coal into the chute. All right, so now we're going to throw our uh, drop rope down chute. The rope hangs from the beam into the chute. All right, and the troglodyte trundles off into the coal mine. So we should be able to go down to the slanted room now. All right. This small room has a slanted roof, presumably due to the coal chute which passes overhead. You can re-enter the chute to the east. Mounted securely on the wall is a kerosene lamp filling the room with a serene orange glow. A small compartment at its base is open, which I totally spaced out last time. There is a shimmering scroll here. All right. Let's get scroll, because it's the only one here right now. Read scroll. Uh-oh. The, the scroll reads, Golmak Potion, travel temporally. You feel the veal stew potion beginning to wear off and the air here seems pretty unveal unbreathable okay here we go um goal mac me as you cast the spell the shimmering scroll vanishes you are surrounded by a puff of smoke and feel disoriented for a moment when the smoke clears nothing seems to have changed except that the kerosene lamp is now closed open lamp Ah, lamp, get smelly scroll, and you do have to specify because you've gone back in time, and there's actually another Golmac, the shimmering scroll still there. All right, 
So now we go east out of here. Wee! And the coal bin room. Hopefully I uh, hopefully I got through this because uh Anyway, coal bin room. This is obviously the heart of a large coal mine illuminated by a wall-mounted lamp. The bottom of a metal chute is visible at the north end of the room. Another chute continues downward at the southern end. A coal bin is overflowing and the floor is completely covered with lumps of coal. A passage leads east, but a western passage is blocked by rubble. Okay, here's the part that's important. Standing here, looking quite confused, is someone who could only be your younger self. An exact duplicate of you, but cleaner and breathing with considerably less difficulty. You remember seeing this scene from another viewpoint just a short while ago. Among the items carried by your twin is your spell book. And the potion is almost completely worn off now, and I doubt you could survive here without it. And so, younger self. Comma, the combination is 496. Enter. Your younger self seems surprised by your statement. A few lumps of coal spill from the coal chute. Your younger self is dropping an orange vial. Wait one more time. I should get the book. Your younger self hands you your spell book. And now we're going to go down the chute. Oh my god. I think we were successful that time. We'll only find out um, if we make it to the end and win. And then I'm going to go back to that save and I'm going to uh, not give myself the combination and see what happens. But let's go ahead and finish this now. Because I've... Uh... So first let's save. And we're going to call this Lagoon. And this is a good lagoon save now. Yes, overwrite it. And what do we got? We look. This is a narrow beach between a small cove to the east and small cliffs to the west. The shore curves to the southeast and northeast. A metal chute leads up into the cliff. Let's uh, read the scroll. The scroll reads Vardic spells. Shield of mind. From an evil spirit. So let's nusto that into our book. Nusto Vardic. Your spell book begins to glow softly, slowly, ornately. The words of the Vardic spell are inscribed, glowing even more brightly than the book itself. The book's brightness fades, but the spell remains. However, the scroll on which it was written vanishes as the last word is copied. You feel the final effects of the Vilstu potion vanish, leaving you totally exhausted. An unfortunate side effect. So now we have to sleep. Ah, sleep. It's been a long day and rest will do you good. You spread your cloak on the floor and drift off. Renewing your powers and refreshing your mind. Time passes as you snore blissfully. You dream of an idyllic scene in the country, a picnic of wood sprites and deerids. You awaken and stand. <coughs> All right, so let's read our book. So. Our book's going to get ruined as soon as we uh, go into this water. So we need to learn the Vardic spell. 
we need to learn the swan cell spell and we need to learn the Meef spell twice to get to the end of this game and we're not gonna and our books gonna be ruined right after this so um, learn Vardic I spell that right yep period space learn swan so um, then learn meef period learn meef all right and let's make sure that worked You have the Meef spell twice, the Vardic spell once, and the Swanzo spell committed to memory. All right. <coughs> so. We are going to go... There's no reason to really to go there. So we're just going to go east and down. All right. East out into the water, surface of lagoon. You are swimming on the surface of a calm lagoon whose sandy floor is visible below. A curved beach surrounds this inlet on its western side. We're going to go down. This is the floor of a cove. Off of the turbulent ocean to the east, the ground slopes upward to the northwest and south. Light filters down from the surface of the water. Nestled among some coral is a clump of stunningly beautiful spence weeds, waving slowly in the currents of the lagoon. So we're going to meef the spence weed. The spence weeds wilt away, revealing a wooden crate labeled with black lettering. And we're going to open the crate. Opening the wooden crate reveals a Gru suit, a can of Gru repellent, and a brass lantern. You won't be able to hold your breath much longer. All right, we got to go up. Catch your breath. So we're at the top of the lagoon again, the surface of the lagoon. Swimming on the surface of a calm lagoon, whose sandy floor is visible below, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's go down. And we're going to get the Gru suit. You are now wearing the Gru suit. That's interesting. We automatically wear it. Go back up. And then we go north. Is that it? And then we're going to go north again. All right. Ocean Shore North. You are standing on the western shore of the mighty Flathead Ocean. According to legends you read at the university, the eastern shore of this ocean is a strange land of magical beings and priceless treasures. You could go north along the shore... The edge of a small cove lies to the southwest. All right, so we're going to go north. The mouth of the river. A mighty river spills into the ocean here. Looking up the river valley, you see a tall waterfall. Atop a cliff high above you is the rampart of a fortress. A cave entrance at the base of the cliff to the west is blocked by writhing green vines. So we're going to meef the vines. 
You can almost feel a wave of pain from the vines as they shrivel away. So now we can go west. Oh, wow. Drulair. This is a low, shadowy cave leading east to west. The rocky walls are scarred with deep claw marks. It's a good thing we got the Gru suit on. A pack of Grus fills the room. The Grus, contrary to all conventional wisdom, aren't bothered by your light in the least. They must be mutated Grus no longer fearing light. They seem to be ignoring you, aside from a few suspicious gurgles in your direction. All right, let's go west again. All right, we made it to the Mammoth Cavern. The Mammoth Cavern. This cavern is of extraordinary size, but nevertheless crowded with powerful looking machinery. You recognize a breeder for producing millions of the mutated grues you just passed. Other devices seem designed to aid the forces of evil while sapping magic powers of enchanters everywhere. At the far end of the cavern are three closed doors, a black marble door leading northwest, a shiny silver door leading due west, and a door of bleached white wood to the southwest. All right, so let's save. And we're going to call this uh, cavern. Check our spells. Vardic. I just want to make sure I don't misspell these. So Vardic is the shield mind, and Swanso is the uh, dispel spirits. All right. We got an exorcism to perform here, but first, um. Southwest is the one we want, but this is I saved it so we could go look at the other rooms. And then I'm going to do one example of seeing what happens after I win the game of uh, score of 355. We're getting close to the end, aren't we? I think there's 400 points. Um. Let's see what it tells us if we quit. This puts you in the class of Sorcerer. Ooh, I've made it to Sorcerer. 355. No, I don't want to leave the game. I just wanted to see what you're going to call me this. So I'm, I've, I've, uh, I've uh, graduated to Sorcerer. So we're going to go... In, um, Northwest first, open. Here, let's just look. Open marble door. Chamber of Living Dead. Oops. The very walls of this room do seem to soak up all light. So it seems as though you are floating in the center of an infinite void. Hideous parasites descend upon you and tear your flesh from your bones. Gnaw the eyes from your sockets. And feast upon your very brain tissue. Amazingly, you do not die and your body regenerates itself as you await the next attack. Is that just going to do the same thing over and over again? Your agony is too Kate to concentrate on such an action. All right. So let's restore. And uh, that was the wrong door. Okay, let's see what the silver door looks like. Open. Silver door. The Hall of Eternal Pain. 
This room is filled with blinding light that stabs at your eyes. Disembodied forces suck at the very thoughts of from your mind, savoring each moment and growing stronger. Every second is an agonizing torment, as though thousands of raging fires were exploding in your skull, feeling you with a pain greater than you could ever imagine. So we're just stuck here. All right, restore. So what we really want to do is open the white door. The door creaks slowly open. Within, you see someone lying as though asleep. You feel yourself drawn into the room. Belboz's hideout. An acrid stench fills this small room, which is obviously a control center for the evil experiments in the cavern outside. Hanging on the wall is a heavy dagger, its handle encrusted with diamonds. Belboz is lying here, motionless but not asleep. He seems to be in some sort of trance. No Emacs here. <laughs> um, so, Vardic me first. A feeling of warmth and protection fills your mind. And then we're going to Swanzo. Bellboss. Ta da! A wispy, translucent shape rises from the body of Bellboss. It speaks in a voice so deep that your whole body seems to hear it. Foolish charlatan, I am forced to flee that weak old body. I shall take your own instead. Already I have sucked all knowledge, all secrets from that ancient enchanter. Now begins an epoch of evil transcending even your worst nightmares. A reign of terror that will last a thousand, thousand years. The shape blows toward you on a cold wind. G.R. surrounds you like a cloud and begins to contract. Suddenly, it strikes your invisible protection and recoils as if burned. No, it cries. Such a guileless enchanter developing a mind shield. The cloud is thinner, the voice fainter. It cannot be. I cannot survive without a host. The demon roils in agony, then thins and dissipates. There is a final scream of pain, then silence. Belboz moans softly and begins stirring. He sees you and rises, instantly alert. After posing a few well-chosen questions, he cast a brief but unfamiliar spell. An instant later, your Gru suit has vanished and you are standing in the chamber of the circle. The circle of enchanters is assembled. Belbaz speaks. Once again, this young enchanter has done a matchless service to the guild and to the entire kingdom, displaying resourcefulness and imagination worthy of the greatest of enchanters. I grow old and must soon step down as head of the circle. But let it be known that a successor has been found. <coughs> Your score is a 400 out of 400 and 673 moves. This puts you in the class of leader of the circle of enchanters. Here ends the second chant. Here ends... 
the second chapter of the Enchanter Saga, in which, by virtue of your skills, you have been appointed as the next leader of the Circle of Enchanters. The final adventure awaits you as the Enchanter series concludes. Would you like to restore? Blah, 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 blah. All right, so, made it through the game. Before I get out of here, I am going to... So let's go restore back to temp one. And let's just mess this up. So go east. Open vial. Drink potion. Oh, drop, uh, drop the vial. Twenty nine, huh? And I'm not going to give him the combination. I think is what I'm going to try. And give book to older self. He accepts it. Oh. <laughs> well, good for you. So east, oh shit, oh well. Turn dial to 29, open the door, east, and frots the amulet, get rope, up, Northwest, get timber. Northwest again. West. Tie rope. Wait. Yeah. Two timber. Drop timber. <laughs> Drop rope. Down shoot. Down. Okay. Get shimmering scroll or this is the only scroll here right now go mac me open the lamp get the smelly scroll because we've gone back in time and the uh, shimmering scroll is here again also so I do have to specify which scroll now. East. Wait. Your younger self is dropping an orange vial. Wait again. Your younger self hands you your spell book. Now notice we didn't give him the combination. So I'm going to go down and see what happens. Ta-da! And see, if, so if you create a time paradox, suddenly, without the slightest fanfare, you cease to exist. Oops. If you still existed, your score would be 320 out of a possible 400. 
in 596 moves. This puts you in the class of member of the Circle of Enchanters. Would you like to restart? So. <laughs> oh. So. What else can we try? So basically, if you mess up the time travel part in any way, you either can't win the game because you need the uh, Vardic Potion. And you need... Now, I still don't know. It's like... How did this time loop get started to begin with is kind of weird. But... But yeah, if you mess it up, you can't win the game. And there's... And what I do, I spent an hour the stream before this one doing that coal mine over and over again and messing up and messing up and messing up. So I got through it this time. I'll be putting a, a sorcerer playlist together. And... Uh, Depending upon how long it is. Because I think if you just go straight ahead. And uh, don't mess up. I'm pretty sure you can get through it pretty quick. So it's maybe I'll just stick it all in one video. But in any case. I know there's at least two of these vids. Two of these streams that I could just delete completely. And the playthrough would still be complete in the... Uh, text adventure playlist so thanks for the two of you that showed up in chat it uh looks like there's a couple more watching and we finally got through this game so in case uh in case in case you missed it let's go ahead and restore to the cavern and we're gonna go uh open the white door And we got to uh, Vardic myself. Actually, we can't read the book now because it's ruined. The book is damp and the writing unreadable. But anyway, Vardic is to protect as a mind shield for myself. Vardic me. And uh, Swanzo is a... Uh, to exercise the evil spirit out of Belbaz. <laughs> so, whoops. And boom. And so then the he tries to go into your body, but you've gotten GR, that is, tries to go into your body. He can't because you got the mind shield. And so he's. You defeat, you defeat the dude and uh, you become the uh, leader of the Circle of Enchanters. And I think the, I think the next game in the Enchanter trilogy is uh, Spellbreaker. And that one is just, uh, that one's really hard. That's probably the hardest Infocom game there is. And I know I can't get through it without, uh, that one I can't figure out. I've got to look up hints for that one. But, uh, I'll figure out another text adventure to play after, uh, next time. <laughs> Dan, that's worse than a butterface. Butterface. It sounds like she didn't even have the body to go ahead and say butterface. It's worse than a butterface. So, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and quit the game. 
And, uh, yeah, I finally got through that game. I'll tell you what, there was a lot of uh, off-streaming time of going around. Man, NetHack, I haven't played that in forever. I had a Commodore VIC-20. And if it wasn't NetHack, it was a game like NetHack that I loaded off of Cassette Drive. Because I had a cassette drive for my Commodore VIC-20. And that was like... That's the only game I remember on that Commodore VIC-20. God, that was so long ago. I'm surprised I remember it at all. But, uh... I'll probably pick another Infocom game. Um... So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll pick out another text adventure to start tomorrow at some point. So let's see. Where's the end? There is the end stream button. <laughs> and.